Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, can you believe it? I have her, Peyton Ashbrook. You guys know her as Jenny Sullivan, the lady, the toughest prosecutor in all the TV fandom. She has come here to sit down on my electronic couch. Ms. Ashbrook, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Well, I am glad to have you. And whenever we have the mega celebrity superstars, you know I've got to give you the Hollywood clap. This is for you for coming to spend time oh, with us. I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait. Okay. Wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> like, woo, it's been a long journey, y'all. Like, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> yes, yes. And that's some of the reasons why we have her here, my audience. Um, if you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Links is in description. She also has a wonderful IG and a Twitter. Her links are in the description as well. And when we're done, about an hour from now, I will put her episode on the podcast. Life Games podcast is down there as well. Peyton, Peyton, Peyton. <laughs> We've some of us have met and fallen in love with you from Power Book Two. But oh no, <laughs> every <laughs> every actor and actress has an origin story. So what was it that got you into acting? And when did you figure out that this was a craft that you could grab and be a super talent at? Oh, this question. I I like struggled with how to answer this question for a very long time because it, it has been a long winding road. I uh, both sides of my family are actors and I grew up in oh. Los Angeles. So mm -hmm. I've been on a some kind of film set or theater my whole life, like constantly. So mm -hmm. grown up watching it, admiring my mom, you know, do do her thing on TV and, and theater in L.A. And um and I think for a while I was I was kind of shy as a kid or I felt shy. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't I didn't gravitate toward it. I, I don't know. I was like shy and then I was performing and then I was shy <laughs> again and I just didn't know what was going on. So I did like visual arts and I thought maybe singing would be the thing. And mm -hmm. um, and then I ended up going to uh, a high school for the performing arts called LOXA in L.A. And um, okay. I, I auditioned for the singing the voice department first. And that was like a little bit of a traumatic experience. And so the guy, uh, one of the administrative people there was like, well, have her audition for theater. She does, she acts too. So she, and I was like, okay, I guess I'll, I can do that. I know how to do that. So I ended up going there and I thought I might be a director or a filmmaker. And it wasn't until like senior year of high school when I really got the first chance to be the a lead of a show um, called mm -hmm. Dear Charlotte, and it was this lovely, you know, like really minimalist, beautiful play. And um, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, I think I am an actor. Like every <laughs> school I applied to after high school was, I only applied to, every school was for acting and I only got into two of them. Um, and and I got into all the film schools I applied to, but I like still, I was, I guess I something clicked in that play for me and I just kept pursuing acting relentlessly after that <laughs> while oh. doing a lot of other weird like I I worked as crew on film sets and I've been mm -hmm. in the service industry and I've taught fitness you know I've done a lot of different care like child care um but I've always been acting at the same time since high school gotcha gotcha yeah. now it, it from what you've said you also have some golden pipes. Am I to hear that? You've got a little golden pipe down. Do you care to give us a bar of the Star Spangled Banner or something? Oh, you care to give man. Us <sighs> Let's go. Let me just... Me, me, me. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, it's so funny you asked me that because I literally sang the Star Spangled Banner for the first time in I don't know how long yesterday when I was watching the All-Star Game. <laughs> <laughs> I was inspired. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, sure. No way. I'm not going to sing for you guys yeah, right now. Yeah, it is all 7 we, p.m. All we want from you is one bar. You don't got to sing the whole song. We just want right. to see the gravity. I got one. Okay. I got one. Okay. I got one. Gotcha. Um, oh my God. Blue. If I had to do one, I would do a Johnny Mitchell song. So that 
that's what I picked. <laughs> oh, mm. so let me find out. You can go and make you an album on top of all this acting you're doing. Let me find out. So do you still love music while we're talking I about do. it? So are you doing anything with music along with your acting? You know, I'm not really. I, I sing just because it brings me joy these days. I play ukulele a little bit. I play guitar a little bit. And it's a it's a big, um, helpful release for me emotionally. I work through stuff when I sing. So it's become more of a personal thing. I would, of course, love to like have some kind of gig um, where I get to really dive back into that because I miss it. I've done, you know, musicals. I'm a theater person. Like, I just, I, I love singing. So hopefully one day soon, but mostly exactly. over the past few years, it's been just for me. Okay. Well, maybe one of these days we'll see you doing some Broadway plays where you can kind of exercise your acting plus the singing as well. And you never know. We're going to keep a, we're going to keep an eye on you, Miss Peyton. We're going to keep an <laughs> eye on you as far as that's concerned. That'd there are great. some other things that attracted me to you as an actress, as I was start following your journey on social media. You are not afraid to tackle some of the social issues of the day. You are a supporter of Black Lives Matter and the issues that minorities and women endure. Talk to me about what has given you the courage to put that on your sleeve when a lot of entertainers are a little nervous about doing that because they don't want the blowback, black backlash or whatever you want to call it, but you have been out front, out forward on what is equitable for everybody in humankind. Talk a little bit about that. I just don't see any other version of my life where I don't do that. You know, I painted that and I painted that. Yeah. I mean, I really, I just, there's no version of my life living authentically where that's not, you know, brought to the forefront. I think social justice is incredibly important. It's, we're all connected to each other um, and we have to all have each other's backs and support each other. And um, yeah, I mean, I have just always kind of, been that way. I don't know. And I, I, I just, I, I understand how people can be nervous about, you know, up being so upfront about their political views, but I just never connected in that way. Like, I don't even think of it as a political thing. Like it's a human right. thing you know, exactly. to me. So mm -hmm. yeah, I just, I, I honestly just don't see any other version being possible for me. It's just who I am. And I try to be as authentic as I can on social media. Cause I think sometimes it's easy these days to, um, like Instagram, especially, I think there's a whole different world and things that people want to project to people that isn't necessarily like true to, to their day to day life. And, and I think it's important as an example to like show that being authentically who you are and supporting what you support and you're and being open with your ideas. Um, if you feel safe to do so, I think it's really important to do that. Considering I'm someone who has to deal with some of the issues you are supporting, I just want to say thank you. Um, I'm proud of you. And it made this, this interview even more fruitful for me that you are willing to stand for some issues that if you decided you didn't want to deal with, you could completely not deal with it and just turn the blind eye. It wouldn't even affect you as much. But because you believe in humans, as you just mentioned, I'm very grateful to have you. And ladies and gentlemen, her social media, her IG is down there. She did paint this. This is right there on her social media page on Instagram. Go check her out. And now, as we're riding down this road of learning, Miss Peyton, you've been credited since 2008 with some somewhere over 34 <laughs> different acting um, jobs and yeah. shorts and all kinds of things. And it started way back when you did a show called Do Not Feed. Tell me what that was like. Yeah, oh yeah. I, I told you I do homework now. <laughs> Woo, we're going way back. Yes, yeah, ma'am. Yes, so, ma so there was a period of time after I I went to my first acting conservatory uh right out of high school in New York. And it was two years, and I had another year basically in New York where I kind of gave myself my own version of film school in a way, like acting for film. And I did 25 short films in a year. And I just like was constantly doing it just to learn and to get better. And, and I loved it. I really, really love how collaborative filmmaking is. Um, I find it really exciting. And so Do Not Feed, I believe, was a short horror film, mm -hmm. where, which yep. we shot in New Jersey. 
and had to camp out in the woods overnight in the rain. And I remember, um, this is such a silly story, but I remember like the tent I was in, um, there was some light outside in the middle of the night and it was just pouring rain. And I saw these giant centipedes that were like, <laughs> No joke, like this big and like the fattest, hairiest legs. And they were all of their silhouettes were like all over my tent. Ooh. And I found out later that they had gotten under some people's pillows and like almost <gasps> bit people. Yeah, it was a it was an oh. interesting experience. I have a, quite a few interesting short film stories, <laughs> some things that I've done, situations I've been in. But I enjoyed the film. I got to improvise a lot. Um, the cast was really fun. We had a great time. It was it was like, and I was with people who were my age. We were all like in our early 20s, just like figuring it out or late mm -hmm. teens on my, on my part, but um, just figuring out this whole thing. So yeah, that's that was an, that takes me back because that I think we shot that in 2007, actually. Um, mm -hmm. Oof. Have you seen it? Well, no way. Uh, I do homework. When I do oh homework my God. from people I like, I get it. But that's not all I've seen that you've done. I've got something else I want the people to see that you did in 2009. If you want to see uh, a younger Peyton in 2009, take a look at this clip. Oh, my God. What is Hello. Is this Beatrice Shepard? Yes. I hate to bring you this news, but we have the body of your father. Look what I wanted to do. You are the only registered family member we've... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a dark one. <laughs> that was a, a dark movie about a dad who abused his daughter and um, and her basically through her dream and psychology was able to kind of go back and stop him from doing mm -hmm. it to her inner child, basically. So that was a doozy. Yeah, I was right in that time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, I mean, you done invented the, the multiverse before the Marvel MCU came up with it, going through dreams and getting things fixed up. And I highly recommend that you guys go and check that out along with the other one that we showed earlier. She's got some hits. And now we'll fast forward you a little bit. You have played in two shows that I watched. One of them I really, really dearly love. You've been in House of Cards. You've been in Madam Secretary. But more importantly, which should tell you which one I'm favoring. You've been in the good fight, and um, my favorite show. And 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 the reason that I love this show is because this is a spinoff of the Good Wife, which I watched weekly, ran into it, loved it, and I was upset when they didn't um, go forth with more of it. But then when I heard that it was coming out with the good the good um, fight, I loved it. And I caught you in there, see? I remember <laughs> you. This was my first time yeah. seeing you before we got to know you as Jenny Sullivan. So talk about wow. your experience working with that crew. Oh, they were so great. I mean, and that's one of my favorite shows. I think that might be my favorite, other than Ghost, my favorite show on television right now. Because um, they're just, mm. they're such risk takers. And they... Yes. They're like, they're interested in new forms of what a TV show should or could be mm -hmm. and what a TV show can and cannot say. They really like push the envelope with that stuff. And so I, I really admire the Kings in that way. And working with those actors was just like, I didn't get to meet Christine, but Kush was like delightful. She is a dream. And I really, we just hit it off. She's so great. And I hope I get to work with her again too very soon. Um, but I had a ton of fun. It was like three days upstate. I think we were upstate. Yeah. Got to play Republican, you know, stretch in that <laughs> way, know. be pro, pro life, I think, get into like arguments about pro life. <laughs> uh, I should say anti abortion, probably. But um, yeah, that was, that was really fun. It was nice to be kind of, I feel like my casting a lot has been sort of in that vein where it's like mm -hmm. a professional or like maybe a, a woman with kind of a stick up her butt a little bit. Um, or, a grieving like a mom who's just like lost her child or like her child right. is sick. Like there's no, it's kind of the two that I get cast in a lot. <laughs> so it's very fun. <laughs> well, it's a wide, well, you know. Sp speaking of your casting, how do you, how do you select roles? Like what, what is the, the mindset or the process you go through when roles come your way and you decide whether or not you're going to take them? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I'm lucky that I get a lot 
um, forwarded to me because my reps really understand me and who I am and what the kind of work I want to do. So it's pretty rare mm -hmm. these days when I pass on things. The only right. things I tend to pass on are, are when I just feel like the female character is pretty one dimensional um, or okay. is just there to be a device to the male character in the story. Oh. Um, or, you know, there's still the occasional, um, you know, role that calls for maybe some gratuitous violence that happens. And I'm not really down for that unless it's like, I don't know, it's got to be, it's got to be absolutely necessary to the story storyline. I really got to get something from it. Um, it has to serve a greater purpose than just like, this is how we're going to make this female character be uh, sympathetic to people, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I prefer like well-rounded three-dimensional women to play, um, mm -hmm. which is why Jenny Sullivan is so fun. Cause she is like, <laughs> she's very, very complicated and not perfect mm -hmm. at all. Like she's a mess. Um, and she's also no. like really smart. She's a lot smarter than me and a lot dumber than me in some ways too. So it's a nice way to stretch, <laughs> you know? Well, speaking of Jenny Sullivan, it's time we let her out the closet and get in on this show. And a little birdie told me you had a couple of scenes that you really, really like. And we're going to recap some of those scenes from Power Book 2 Season 2 and just have you explain to us what it was you was trying to portray yeah. that I feel like we all figured out anyway because your acting was immaculate. It was wonderful. It had me so upset with you on one of those scenes when you was <laughs> chastising Tariq's little sister. I called I you a bad name because you was embodying that role so yeah. well. Thank you. So <laughs> let's, take, let's take a look at a scene and just see what you was trying to convey to the audience. Take a look at this. Okay. I'm laughing because I caught the soda way you took that briefcase and swiped it right across his. Uh, yeah. What's up with that, Jenny? <laughs> what, what was what was that about? Poor kid. Well, Kevin. actually, that's like a moment that Jeff and I worked out together because it was kind of naturally happening when I would get up because Jenny just this guy gets under Jenny's skin. Like, I don't know if you oh. can notice that from the scene, but that's mm -hmm. part of what I love about this scene is like she's just so sick of these men. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you just keep thinking that they know everything and you know and like jumping ahead and like being reckless and and she's just had it so it's really fun to play that it's really fun to play that with Jeff and at the end with the pert or the briefcase um it was happening and then Jeff was like hey remember that thing a couple takes ago when you do that like let's really play that moment I was like absolutely <laughs> And so we really, yeah, we, cause she, that's, that represents exactly how she feels about him, the situation. It shows us how she's feeling. I love that kind mm -hmm. of stuff where you find those little moments that kind of elevate a scene even more and like are relatable at the same time too. Cause I can, <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> you got that right. And I enjoyed reviewing that scene because I talked about that. I was like, if Jenny could have used her hair to whip it back and forth, <laughs> she could have done that yeah. instead of the briefcase. Yeah. So that was fun. And and you guys did such a, a good job in that scene. And I didn't show where Cooper Sacks pops up later on. And you kind of rolled your eyes at him. And he was curious, hey, who's this guy <laughs> over here? You sitting at the bar having a drink with and you was like, don't even worry about it. <sighs> Yeah, what? I'm not your I'm not your girlfriend, Cooper. Okay, like, oh. let me live. <laughs> oh, good. Ooh, wee. Mm -mm -mm. So I that mean, was one scene. Definitely in her, yeah. That was one scene as we're building to what's going to go on with you and Cooper. But here's another one where it looks like there was about to be destruction between Jenny and Cooper. Take a look at this. Ooh. Oh, Jenny, just yeah. just love him and kick him out. My goodness, Jenny. <laughs> and shout out to Shane. He did a great job with you in that scene. My He's main guy, shout out to him. And, and talk to me, what was Jenny trying to let us know in that scene? Jenny was upset. She was really upset. I mean, this is this is a foundational scene, I feel like, when it comes to these two characters and how they interact with each other. Like, mm -hmm. I, I love this scene. And I remember Courtney specifically had her hands in the scene. Like, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think she wrote it. And it's like, the fact that we start from like this really funny moment of us in bed having bad sex to right. then suddenly this alarm bell going off that 
the that Tariq may have heard the tape and know who Lauren is, and that puts her in grave, grave danger. That's very, very bad. And the fact that like Cooper and Jenny can't really seem to communicate on a on a real emotional level about it. Like it's it mm. stays in this kind of lawyer, you know, uh, disconnected place and um and yet all of these emotions are coming up because she's terrified that she that she's put some that someone's life is at risk and that lauren could get killed or hurt or you know um so she and she's not wrong about that that's an incredibly dangerous thing so it was one of those moments where and as an actor that scene was so important for me and my like my learning because we just went so it, the arc of the scene is so big and from where it starts to where it ends up. And uh, I remember doing a take and just feeling like immediately, I like felt in my body what the scene was supposed to be and where I was supposed to go by the end of it. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I would like a take again right away. And Shanna who directed that was like, absolutely, let's go. And we just did it again right away. And she was an incredible director and gave me the space and helped me feel safe enough where it was an environment that I could like really, you know, take charge and, and, um, uh, be able to work in the way I needed to, to get the scene where I believed that it could be. And I'm very proud of that scene. Um, I just, and obviously like working with Shane is a dream. He's just like so fun and playful and he takes the, the art, uh, the craft of acting so seriously. So it's mm -hmm. anytime I get to work with Shane, it's just like an easy flow. You know, we speak each other's language in that way. So yeah, it was a great, it was a great experience for me. And, and when, when you have an actor who can uh, reciprocate what you're giving the way you talk about Shane being able to do, does it make those scenes, um, I don't want to say easy, but does it make it more comfortable in those type of scenes? It makes it more real. So it's as if there's less acting that I have to do. Okay. You know, at the end of the day, it's like, it's like Shane is where he is as Cooper and Peyton's going to be where she's at as Jenny. And when you feel safe with an actor um, and there's this energetic exchange that can just kind of take place where it does sometimes feel like if you get to a certain point, you're just like, Oh, that was, that wasn't even, it didn't even feel like a scene anymore. It just felt like I wasn't acting. It just felt like that came out exactly how I instinctually and intuitively was responding in the moment to whatever Shane was giving me. And we can kind of do that. You know, we like to, we don't do it the same every time. So it, it keeps us kind of on our toes and it keeps us um, it's, it's a little easier to listen because you have to listen. Cause if Shane does something different with this line, then I have to let that affect Jenny and that's going to change whatever I do. So whatever I like had in my head or pre-planned could change based on whatever Shane gives me. And that's part of why it's so fun to work with him because I just feel like we can really, you know, um, strip it all away and just get down to like the moment moment to moment work um which is so important to connect those and dots you, you know you both nailed it um and one thing that i'm wondering i think some of the audience is wondering you guys kind of had this energy from this point going backwards for a little bit at any point in time was jenny looking for something more long term with cooper Sachs, or for her was it just of convenience the whole time well, they have a little bit of a history and we haven't really, that hasn't been shown on the show yet. I don't know if it will be. Um, but I remember when we talked to Courtney in the early days where I think Jenny was just supposed to be a, it was originally, Jenny was a recurring character on the first season. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I believe what I've heard is that Courtney didn't necessarily have a plan for Jenny. Like it was just this character. And then because of some work that I did, or that, that some scenes that I did in the first episode and then maybe the second episode, she was, she started to see this relationship with her and Cooper because it's even hinted at in that first episode in the pilot where um, I think when I encounter him at the, at the, the coffee cart outside yeah. and I'm like, Oh, I should have gotten that restraining order or something like that. <laughs> They've had a relationship already, like somewhat. You know, and I think a big part of that problem was the fact that Cooper wasn't really grown up enough to be able to mm -hmm. actually meet Jenny's needs. And right. so uh, it ended. Um, and uh, and so this what we're doing now is kind of we've already kind of tried the relationship thing in Jenny's mm -hmm. mind and it didn't work. Um, and we just know that this this is like the one thing that we can still kind of 
use each other for. Um, but for Jenny, she's just so good at compartmentalizing everything. So she's able yeah. to like, um, put whatever feelings, suppress whatever feelings she may or may not have for Cooper just to like do her job and not, cause she doesn't trust him. I mean, who would trust mm -hmm. Cooper at this point? He's not a super trustworthy person and he hasn't been very trustworthy to Jenny at this point in, right. in the way she thinks about it. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like, we have to see like if he earns her trust, if he can, if it's possible, you know? Um, hmm. Yeah, so there's history there for sure, for sure. I've, I, we'll get there, but I feel like that something Cooper did in the finale was an ultimate trust gainer for Jenny. But we'll 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 get there in a little bit. We'll get yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, this will be on the podcast. If you want to listen to it going on after this, um, I'll have it up in about an hour. So go ahead and download it. She has links in the video description. You can catch her on Twitter. You can catch her on Instagram. Follow this young lady. She didn't just come to sit on my e-couch just to talk to me. She loves you guys as fans, and I want you guys to please follow her and watch her journey as she makes things move. I got one final clip for you, Jenny, and this was the one. This right. was the one. When I say this was the one, I mean you was up there. I felt like if Johnny Cochran was still alive, he would have hired your ass on the spot. Take a look at this. Mm. Woo, woo. Let me tell you something, Peyton. You Please. had all the black women that was above the age of 50 looking just like this lady right here. It was like, girl, girl, bye. I ain't trying to hear none of this mess you're talking about. It's what the, and, and I'm sitting up here like, that was a convincing thing Jenny just got up there and did. So, so talk to me about what was you trying to purvey? How did you enjoy shooting that scene? Because you did it in that, I mean, for real. Everybody yeah, was I, buying what you were selling. Talk about that. I love the courtroom stuff, man. You know, it really felt like doing theater again because you do okay. have this huge audience suddenly and it, in a huge room, you know, and it kind of mm -hmm. like, I was like, oh, thankfully I have this theater training, you know, I'm like carrying my voice and, you know, uh, these long, amazing thoughts that they write for Jenny, like they will, the text, like when you actually look at the text they give me in my dialogue, it's sometimes some chunk that's this big is like two sentences, maybe one. So it's epic. It's just like an aria and it's so fun to play. Um, as a theater nerd, I like really, really relished in getting to play like that again. Um, and, and also like with this scene to point out too, that when I talked to Courtney about this part, it was important to her that Jenny wasn't, you know, she's not a Karen, actually. Like Jenny, yeah. mm -hmm. Jenny's flawed, absolutely, and definitely has blind spots, like big ones, um, as any white woman does. Um, mm -hmm. But and at the same time, you know, she she is about getting justice. And in her mind at that moment, Tariq did it. And he needs mm -hmm. to go to jail. Like as far as she's concerned, that's where the evidence is pointed. Um, she knows a lot more about his family also and the, where he's come from, more about Ghost, obviously about Tasha because, you know, of the first season I was prosecuting her. Um, right. So I have, you know, she's she's putting these pieces, she's put these pieces together. She didn't think, she wasn't the one that thought of Tariq at first. She, she didn't think it was Zeke either. She just wants whoever did it to be in jail. Whoever killed mm -hmm. the cop, whoever killed Professor Jabari Reynolds, go to jail. <laughs> Um, so, you know, what's great about that is that for Jenny, she just feels so righteous and right when she's doing this, even though she is not right. Um, and that's the beautiful thing about the writing that no character is, is completely right all the time. Every, mm -hmm. every character is complicated enough that you're in it. When you're in an argument, you kind of both have to be right and you both have to be wrong for it to be really dynamic and interesting. And um, and to do that as an actor, you just fully commit. Like it was just about committing to this is the guy that did it. He needs to be in prison and believe it with her full heart so that she could then communicate it to the jury in that way, which was just kind of, you know, she's she excel. She's very good at her job. She's a very convincing yeah. prosecutor, I think. Um, so it was fun to get to do that. It was a blast. <laughs> and, and I loved working with Method so much. He was so fun. <laughs> Everything about the courtroom scenes, it just had a blast every time. If, if I was to ever become an actor, I would love to do a courtroom scene because I would turn it out. 
I would be using <laughs> words that got like 15 syllables. That's <laughs> it's always a dream to see someone portray the courtroom the way you did. And I enjoy every moment of you guys in the courtroom. You even had a scene where you had a judge who was a supporter of young black men. I didn't get that clip, but I thought that having the judge have a little flavor and be a yeah. little different yeah. added to Absolutely. it. Of course, he wasn't saying some of the things you wanted him to say as Jenny, but right. for for the, the fans watching, he added a little bit of flavor to those oh, scenes, yeah. and it was just great. And so now we're we're kind of we're booking season two, and we're kind of getting into season three. And Cooper Sats made a sacrifice at the end of this season. Talk to me about how Jenny is feeling in that moment because it seems like she was buying every ticket he was selling, so much so that she might decide that, hey, it's relationship time. Is there any relationships going on in season three that you want to tell us about? Well, you know, I can't tell you everything, but what I can say, what I can say is that in that scene, I think it's actually was was one of those rare moments for Jenny that all of mm. the things about Cooper and why he's in her life kind of aligned. Cause I think okay. I believe, you know, as the actor playing her, like, and you know, just from knowing human psychology that it is very, it is not um, a, a surprise that she would have some feelings for Cooper that she doesn't necessarily allow. Like, I think it's unconscious. Like she's not even fully aware. And I think in that scene, mm he was able to draw some of that out of her because she does want on some level to believe what he's saying, not only because it would help her case or help her, you know, um, put someone in prison who's a murderer in, in her, in her mind. Um, but it also is what she wants to hear. I think whether she realizes it or not from a man who she actually may have feelings for, um, whether or not she actually, you know, fully embraces those feelings is to be seen. Um, Cause I think there are definitely moments in my life where I can remember kind of getting caught up in the moment and feeling for someone because they were the right answer for me at that moment in time, whether or not right. that lasted or, or became, you know, something bigger uh, depended on so many factors. And there's so many factors surrounding Jenny and Cooper's relationship, you know, so mm-hmm. I think it's it's very possible, absolutely. And I think it's also um, possible that she continues to compartmentalize or or she doesn't and it gets more and more messy, you know? And that's kind of, that's gonna be, I think the fun thing to watch happen in season three is seeing how this gesture that Cooper's making, and it's actually like a really significant sacrifice, um, mm-hmm. how him doing that, how she handles that, how how Jenny deals with it what she makes it mean about them and um, what she makes it mean about her, what she has to do as a prosecutor. Um, Because at the end of the day, Jenny's ambition, I think trumps almost anything. She is all about her job. She is Mm. just, and that so is Cooper. Um, And that's part Mm -hmm. of why they understand each other. I think so well in certain ways Um, they definitely understand that about each other. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be an interesting ride. And as we are shooting season three now, you know, it's really interesting to see what is coming my way. So it's, y'all are going to love it. I'm excited. <laughs> I, I, I'm nervous because- <laughs> Sure you should the, be. The, I mean- <laughs> the, the, the sacrifice that Cooper Sacks made got me worried that either you or him, and I know you can't say anything. So yeah, I mean, I'm just giving know. my theories. This is part of what I do. I'm I worried don't know. you or him could possibly kick the bucket. I'm very, very because he just gave a sacrifice greater than his job. I know you say you two both are about your careers, He's but what Cooper Jenny Sachs over. just yes, he mm-hmm. is siding with Jenny above everything else and his life, as he yeah. said, is my life and Jenny. He's siding with you two, which has yeah. me very concerned considering he's working with Davis McLean. He knows all this information on the Tariq organization and Davis McClain has all this information on the Tejada organization and Cooper Sacks is right in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. See, he's a huge, it's a huge deal to Jenny, obviously. So like him saying that he will do that for her in that moment mm -hmm. was exactly what Jenny needed to hear to actually 
some of those emotions I do, they pulled out of me, like they happened. Um, and, I, and as they did for Peyton, they do for Jenny. So yeah, it's um, Jenny's, she's, like I said earlier, it's, it's kind of messy. And I don't know what, I literally don't know what will happen. I don't know. And right. I think everybody, everybody on this show, you know, you're always, you're kind of like, it could happen at any moment, you know, like, <laughs> did I earn my death or has, is it happened? Like, you just kind of go with it, <laughs> you know, and just like, hopefully I make it out alive, but hopefully right. Cooper makes that. I really would love him not to die. So <laughs> so I really like working okay. with Shane. Um, and I would like mm -hmm. to not die because I really enjoy this character, but you know, mm -hmm. whatever, I really do trust the writers at this point. I think they're so, so good at knowing like the best way to move this story and serve this story. Mm -hmm. And there's just so many options they could pick, you know? Um, so I'm really excited to see what they do come up with and how, cause it could go, you know, maybe 10 different ways at the end of the day. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah. We'll have yeah. to see. Well, Miss Peyton, we have fans that want to ask you a question or two. And we <laughs> have one of the number one fans of power who's right here, ready to ask a question. People know her as, Moochella, who Hi, hang Aiden. with the fellas and put up the hammers. Hello. Moochie, Hi. Peyton, Peyton, Moochie. Moochie's here to ask Peyton a question. Okay, I want to know what type of research did you do to, 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 how can I say it? To basically do, do your thing in that courtroom because it was yeah. very convincing. Thank you. And, and I love the scene with you and and Davis McLean going back and forth. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, uh, yeah, so I did a big old uh, YouTube rabbit hole of watching lawyers talk to other lawyers a lot. I watched lawyers debate all the time. There's this great debate I think NYU has on YouTube with um, like, do prosecutors have too much power? And you have prosecutors mm. arguing against defense attorneys uh, about like, you know, the problems in our justice system and the holes and stuff. It's fascinating. So I did that kind of more nerdier, heady stuff. But I really, it's funny, we talked about this earlier. Um, I i watched all of The Good Wife. Because <laughs> also Courtney oh, worked too. on The Good Wife she, as a writer for a while. So did she really? I was like, I did, yeah. Right? I did not know that. So no yeah. wonder I love The Good Wife. <laughs> yeah, you was just saying that. That's why I thought you knew. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. I, wow. It was super useful for me. I'm like, oh, great. A show about lawyers that is also like, I because I asked some lawyer friends like what they would recommend because I tend to be a visual learner. I like documentaries and I like watching things. Um, so I knew I wanted to like watch a really good documentary or something. And every lawyer I said was like, well, if you have to watch something, The Good Wife is pretty close to how it is. So mm. that's it. They, they really recommended it. And it, I mean, it's what it's become one of my favorite shows now, of course, um, as well as Good Fight. Uh, right. So yeah, I just dove into that and um, and rely on a lot of my theater training. <laughs> okay, and who do you who do you um, see yourself working with, or who do you want to work with? Like, who is like like? Okay, I feel like I really this is where I want to be. This is who I want to be acting with right now. On uh, from the cast of Ghost or just anybody? Anybody. Okay. Woo. We um, already gosh, I'm so many. Like this, so I'm like. I mean, like, I want to. Well, first, thing? first off, first off, I want to work with every actor on Ghost. I don't know if that'll happen for Jenny because I think mm -hmm. if if I did have a scene with certain characters, we're probably in danger. So <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna happen. But I love everybody. Um, other than that, I mean, I'm on a huge Zendaya kick. I think she's incredible. I'm just like obsessed with what she's doing on Euphoria and I'm just I'm so impressed with her. Oh, what an amazing performer she is. And Christine Baranski, I'm a huge fan. I would like to, I kind of look up to her a little bit. <laughs> um, gosh, there's so many. Kate Blanchett. Um, oh, yes. Oh, oh and Mayor Easttown. Um, with, oh, with Mayor Easttown, that was good too. Oh my gosh, yeah. No, Kate Winslet's amazing. Yeah. She she transformed in that part, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and then for the guys, you know, I always think it'd be fun to be in the Marvel universe. And um, yes, I think so. I would love to work with those actors. I have some great actors in those worlds. Um, something like WandaVision would be really fun. Okay, I love cool. what they did there. Um, yeah, I'm pretty. I I, I want to do 
all the different types of things. I just don't, yeah. I, I, all the actors, all the, all the different genres, TV, film. Um, yeah. I like Chris Pine would be great. I'm really big. I, mm. I think he's so funny and so real when he acts. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. Mm. For now, a oh, ton right. more, but I can't, you know. We'll be I know it's too many to name, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank right. you. Thank, Thank you, Moochie. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't, Moochie has a YouTube channel. She reviews Power. She reviews a lot of other shows. Please subscribe to her channel. And while you're down there, Peyton has her IG and her Twitter down there. Please subscribe to these powerful young women that are making moves in the entertainment industry. We'll see you later, Moochie. Thank you. Bye. Thank you Bye. so much. <laughs> so she took awesome. one of the questions I was going to ask you getting on the off ramp about would you ever want to be interested in, in working in the MCU or doing anything in the comic book world because that's so yeah. hot right now um, I, I don't see how they deny you if you decided you want to go either DC or Marvel I don't see how you can be uh, denied <laughs> I mean I hope I, I that's great to hear from you I, I appreciate it um I do have this like fantasy of being Wonder Woman on like a tv show version or something one day but I don't know if that's gonna happen but something like that I just I think uh it's so fun and I love being physical when I was at school I was always really into stage combat um okay. I just find it to be a blast and um and mm. I like that challenge too to like and the challenge of having to act with like a tennis ball, like these people who are doing these CGI movies often are, they're looking at dots or like a green screen. Right. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and that, that is a very special imagination challenge that I would really like to try out one of these days. I haven't had the pleasure yet, but, um, but yeah, I would love to do that. It's coming. <laughs> oh my yes. goodness. <laughs> it's I'm claiming it for you right now. It is definitely <laughs> we'll coming. manifest that. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. As I prepare to get you out of here again, thank you so much for sacrificing something that's so important, which is your time. Um you. what, if any, advice would you give to someone trying to break into the acting world at this moment, considering you've got years in this thing, you've seen a lot, you've worked in different genres around the, in the industry. What would you say to someone who's trying to get in that's brand new? I would say you have to really believe in yourself to do this thing. Um, and I think, uh, I, I honestly, I think the best thing I could say is like, go to therapy, <laughs> get in some therapy, um, learn, learn about, you know, the different things that make you tick um, and start that healing journey as quickly as you can. Cause we've all in this society have healing to do, you know? Right. And, mm -hmm. um, and I think for a while, as I've been healing over the past several years, you know, I've been therapy for years, but it, I, I've found some things that are really working for me right now. And I've changed just my energy, my energy feels different um, because I'm, right. there's more faith than I've ever had. Um, and the, when I started to believe that it was possible, like actually in my body believe that it was possible to have my dreams and to do this, that's when things started to change. And I intellectually believed it for a long time, but I didn't realize until recently in the last couple of years that you have to know these things on a body level, um, that it's not all just psychology it's actually, everything is linked to the body. Your body is your mind, your mind is your body. It's actually not separate. Um, a great book I would recommend, My Grandmother's Hands by Resma Menachem, anything mm -hmm. that Gabor Mate has written. And I think this is great for just people. Um, and obviously as an actor, you know, speaking from that, it's taught me a lot about just human psychology, how we work. It's helped me, you know, figure out how to play Jenny Sullivan when she is so different mm -hmm. from who I am as a person. Um, so there's really no, yeah, I think take care of you first, believe in yourself. And, and sometimes that takes some training to do in your body to actually get to the point where it feels like safe to believe that something is possible like that. I guess Absolutely. that's what I would say. Yeah. Wow. What a good word. And would you ever be interested in stars does a great job of mixing up their shows, um, something for everyone. 
Yeah. And they've got a little universe going on. They Would do. you ever be interested in playing a crossover series with maybe P Valley or one of my <laughs> favorites, High Town, with one of my favorite <gasps> writers, Rebecca Cutter? Would, yes. If they, was, if they was to say they're going to do something like that, would you be interested in a crossover show? Oh my gosh, please. That would be like a dream. <laughs> like, yes. I mean, I think I think what the content stars is coming out with is like incredible and important. Yeah. And, um, you know, I would love to be a part of that. Absolutely. So 100%. <laughs> gotcha. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the lady who has embodied Jenny Sullivan, the actress behind her, it is Peyton Ashbrook. Peyton, we're so glad you came to see us. Before we get you out of here, let us give you that Hollywood outro that you so rightfully deserve because we see awards going in your hands very soon. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we're, we're so happy to have had you. Um, keep us in mind. We will definitely be reviewing you and following your career and going back, watching you more. Everybody, her links are all in the video description, IG, Twitter. She does an excellent job of not just giving you guys filler. She gives you her actual life, vacations, um, her social issues, um, yoga. Please check this lady out. She's outstanding. She's a welcome on this electronic couch anytime she wants to come back. And we're thankful to have had you on this day. Miss Jenny, Thank any you. words you want to say, Peyton Ashbrook, to the fans? Um, check out my podcast. I have a podcast mm -hmm. about healing the body and how the body heals us. It's called Free Body Podcast. It's available anywhere you listen to podcasts. I'm working on my second season of that now as I film. That's all I got. <laughs> all right well i'm gonna take us out but you sit tight as i take us out don't forget to like the video everybody comment subscribe check out her podcast be sure to download my podcast if you want to take this on the go and get people inspired by some of her kind words until that next sex is hell video which will be at nine o'clock to review power book force i'll see you